I'll call this a preview, but I'll expand on my original post on the Calgary Hitman Corral series here. I mean, if you go back to my original video where I talk about the Calgary Hitman playing three games at the Stampede Corral here when the original announcement was made back in October here, and I'd give my take on it, and, you know, I thought maybe at the time I might decide to catch a game or two, but ultimately the reason why I'm I give him, let's say, a preview here, a week out of here, is because I actually decided to get my three pack here, and uh, I'll get to go to all three games that the Calgary Hitman will be playing at the Old Stampede Corral here. So, uh, so here's my uh, preview and what I'm looking ahead here, and what I plan to do, and uh, you know, I definitely give you my reasons why I feel it's important that uh, I want to take these games in because. Uh, if you look at uh, Calgary plans and uh, development here, uh, you know, the Calgary, Calgary City of Calgary here is planning on expanding the BMO Center at uh, Stampede Park there, which is where the, you know, which is near where the Corral is and, you know, Cowboys Casino and the Scotiabank Salem is currently right now. But unfortunately, I think uh, after almost 70 years, because the Stampede Corral opened, uh, Back in 1950, I think, I believe the uh, exact date was December 15th, 1950. So this building is almost 70 years old, but it's definitely a very historic building. And it's going to tug at a lot of people's heartstrings here, but uh, this building is going to get demolished as part of the BMO expansion. If you see the renderings and plans, the $500 million project here. And, uh, you know, a lot of hockey history has... Played here as a over and heck, even our Calgary Flames actually played in that building for uh, three seasons when they moved out from Alina there. I mean, I don't think it will definitely uh, work in the NHL today unless you got a owner really, really deep pockets that's wanting to lose some money before the new building gets built here. But, uh, I mean, the reason why that the, they were able to pull that off because there was already plans and talks and when the Calgary got the 1988 Winter Olympics here, they knew that uh, there was going to be a bigger rink being built for the uh, Calgary Flames, so they were able to, were able to play in the, the old Stampede Corral here temporarily, which worked out to be three seasons here, but, uh, you know, I mean, that was slightly just before my time, but here, but the other reason is, you know, I'll get to watch some Calgary hockey history, that was before my time, and didn't have a chance to... Uh, Cash these games here, so that's a little history here. But uh, the first game on Friday, February the 1st, the Calgary Hitmen will be taking on the Brandon Wheat Kings here. And the the Calgary Hitmen will be wearing Calgary Centennials jerseys that game. Because from uh, 1967 to 1977, it was the Canadian Western Junior Hockey League, or I think it was called the... Uh, it was just the first junior hockey team to represent Calgary here, and they played their games at the Stampede Corral there. And, uh, you know, Calgary will be wearing their uh, jerseys back then, and, you know, that'll be the first game that the Calgary Hitmen will be playing at the Corral. And then game number two here, which will be on Wednesday, February the 6th, the Calgary Hitmen will be taking on the Regina Pats. And that game, all these games will start at 7 p.m. at the old Stampede Corral here. But the uh, Calgary Hitmen will actually be wearing Calgary Cowboys jerseys. And actually it wasn't junior hockey here, but uh, the old WHA the, there at the time where it was supposed to compete with the NHL there. And, you know, that's where uh, Bobby Hall, for example, uh, went there on Asian Bobby Hall and played on the... Uh, the Winnipeg Jets there, but the the Calgary Cowboys actually, uh, as you can say, their first professional hockey team before the NHL there, and this was also at the time where the WHA was starting to lose stability there, and apparently, uh, I mean, the Calgary Cowboys were only in town for two years there, and that was after when the franchise started off in, uh, you know, the, in Miami and never played a game, and then went to Philadelphia and Vancouver before it went to Calgary here, but uh, they apparently they only got 
3,000 fans and there were definitely arena issues and no hope of arena and there was talk about the WHA at that time ex merging with the NHL there but the Calgary franchise folded before that happened but uh, you know the Cowboys were definitely from 1975 to 1977 in the old WHA and the, and they said also played at the Stampede Corral there and then the last game of the Corral series which would be Friday, February 8th, the Calgary Hitmen will be taking on actually the CHL's uh, top ranked team, the Prince Albert Raiders, and the last jerseys that the Calgary Hitmen will wear, which was actually the last junior hockey team that represented Calgary, the second one before the present day Calgary Hitmen, they'll be wearing the uh, Calgary Wranglers jerseys, and, uh, and definitely will definitely be interesting to see. How that goes, I mean, that the Wranglers represented Calgary from 1977 to 1987, so one of the Centennials left, uh, we were able to get the uh, Wranglers her, right from Winnipeg there, so uh, definitely was junior hockey, at least represented in Calgary for uh, 20 years there before we didn't have junior hockey team for eight years before the present day Calgary Hitman came in. Started playing in the 94-95 season here, but uh, so that's definitely kind of my preview on uh, the uh, Corral series coming up here, and also my plan there is I'll try to document as much as I can, and try to take some pictures, and in the concourse there, I mean I've been in the Corral, you know, for let's say events at the Calgary Stampede, there was other skating shows or dog shows, or you know sometimes. Uh, Actually, there was another time that I went to uh, the Comic Expo, and uh, the crowd was used. But at the time, William Shatner was the uh, the you know the head attraction there, and he gave a speech at the crowd there. I didn't go to that, but uh, they were feeding the line through the crowd there because it's connected to the uh, Bemo Center there, and you know definitely a lot of shows there. But I don't recall ever watching a hockey game at the old Stampede Corral. I, I might have been inside my mother's womb early days when my parents were dating, and I think I might have been in the corral that way when the Flames were still playing at the old Stampede Corral, but uh, I would have not known that, but uh, I know the Hitman has part-time played in the corral in their infancy days, but I was still, you know, junior high, high school at the time, and uh, I mean, the most recent game that the Hitman played at the old Stampede Corral was on... April first, back in 2016, were Game Four of the playoff series against the Red Rebels at the time, because the South Zone was needed for the Juniors at the time. So the the Calgary Hitmen played at the Corral for that playoff game, and uh, I guess they worked it out that uh, there was enough season ticket holders that they were able to get their first dibs on tickets there, and then you know they they had three game packs and you know couldn't beat seventy five dollars for three games to catch games at the old. Corral there, and you can buy single games too. But uh, I'll quickly go over. This is just on Wikipedia here on each franchise here about uh, what each team history of each team here. So I said the Calgary Centennials were uh, a junior hockey team. At the time it was called the Western Canadian Hockey League. They played in Calgary from 1966 to 1967. Actually, the first season they were called the Calgary Buffaloes, and then they took on the Centennial's name, and it looks like, you know, two C's and the, uh, you know, the Centennial flower that was used for 1967, which looks pretty similar to the, the one they revamped for Canada 150 here, and then, and then afterwards, this franchise for five seasons went down to Billings, Montana. They were the Billings Bighorns from 1977 to 1982, and then they went to Nanaimo on the down there, played one season there from 82 83, and then they relocated to the rear of Vancouver area from 1983 to 1988 as the new Westminster Bruins. And then now, from 1988 to now, they're the Tri City Americans, which are based out of Kennebec, Washington. So this franchise is still uh, alive today. And uh, I'm going to say, the, uh, looking at uh, the best season that the uh, Calgary Centennials had was uh, when it comes to playoff success. I mean, they 
were in the finals, the league final from the 1973-1974 season, but they lost the final that year, and then they had three first place finishes here. And then when it comes to Nottingham NHL here, I mean, John Davison played for the Centennials, uh, trying to think of any name, Jerry Holland, and uh, Lanny McDonald actually also played for the Centennials, and Bob Nystrom, Mike Rogers, so uh, there was definitely a couple names that uh, played for the uh, Centennials here, so uh, it's definitely a couple notable NHL alumni. So the next team that will be represented will be the Calgary Cowboys, and as mentioned, they were part of the World Hockey Association that uh, was on shaky ground much of the time there. But this franchise uh, started off as the as the Miami Screaming Eagles, but never played a game. Then there were the Philadelphia Blazers, that's when they actually first played, from 1972 to 1973. And then that franchise relocated to Vancouver, and they were called the Blazers as well, as they played from 1973 to 1975, and then the franchise moved here to Calgary and played two seasons, 1975 to 1977, as the Cowboys before folding. I mean, the league eventually folded from 12 to 8 teams, and then the four teams that went from the WHA that merged into the NHL were the Edmonton Oilers, and then, and then the original Winnipeg Jets, which are now the Arizona Coyotes, and the Quebec Nordiques, which are now the Colorado Avalanche. And the Hartford Whalers, they were actually first called the New England Whalers, who are now the Carolina Hurricanes. So those are the four teams that merged from the WHA there in the NHL today. And the Whalers are the only team that uh, were the original team that was in the original city here. So the Calgary Cowboys, I mean, the first season, they uh, made the playoffs and beat the Nordiques in, uh, in the Western quarterfinal. And... Lost to the Jets in the uh, semifinal, but that's the only best season that their Cowboys had because the next season they didn't make the playoffs at all. So, uh, and then when it comes to anyone who uh, is in the Hockey Hall of Fame that actually played for the Cowboys, the only game that uh, player that is in the Hockey Hall of Fame that say he played for the Cowboys is Harry Hollow, and uh, he played 24 seasons professionally from, uh, and at the time he. Uh, was that at the time he, when he retired, he played the most games at 1,581 games here. So uh, that's a little bit of history for the Cowboys. And then the Calgary Wranglers, the last team that will be represented here, played for Calgary from 1977 to 1987 here. They first came from Winnipeg here because from 67 to 73, there was the Winnipeg Jets in the uh, junior, junior league. And then from 73 to 76, they were called the Winnipeg Clubs. And then from 76 to 77, they were the Winnipeg Monarchs. So once the uh, Centennials left to Billings, Calgary got the Wranglers. So they were able to get a new franchise to represent junior hockey in Calgary. And then after 1987, that franchise has recorded to Lethbridge. And now they're their present-day Lethbridge uh, Hurricanes here. So the best record, best season that I can say the Calgary Wranglers have had was uh, they lost the final in the 1980-81 season here. So uh, both Calgary junior teams have gone to the league final and lost, but uh, Calgary Hitman actually have won two uh, league championships and gone to the Memorial Cup in 1989 and 2010 there, but didn't win the Memorial Cup. Well, the season they lost to Heartbreaker to Ottawa in 1999, and then they lost to uh, the semifinals in, uh, to Brandon in 2010 there, I believe. But notable NHL alumni that played for the uh, Wranglers here, and just looking at the locals that uh, you can make you know if you're a Calgary sports fan, well, Kelly Kissio, Dana Merzen, I think former head coach Jim Playfair, played for the uh, Wranglers, and goalie Mike Vernon. So yeah, he you definitely uh, grew up in Calgary and played in Calgary and and also another former Flame, Kerry Wilson there. So that's definitely a few former Flames there that played for the Wranglers who ultimately played for the Flames at one point in their career. So that's why I say this is kind of just my preview and expanded on my history and take of junior hockey history or Calgary hockey history before the Flames and Hitmen and the uh, Saddledome came to be. But 
I just say I'm looking forward to uh, taking in these three games and seeing the old jerseys and, you know, taking in the Corral, which could possibly be the last hockey games that will ever be played in the old building before uh, it gets knocked down for the BMO Center expansion there. So, yeah, it's, I mean, of course, if you have any, you know, fond memories or any crazy memories of at the Stampede Corral or work there, I mean, I found that on the Facebook groups about, you know, you're from Calgary, you know, you're from Calgary F, and I actually posted something on there talking about it, and I had a lot of interesting stories of people who uh, watched games, worked games, or did whatever during their time when hockey was regularly played at Stampede Corral. But if you have any comments and short stories, of course, put that in, put that in this video here. And uh, I just say, this is definitely me to be able to enjoy some hockey before my time here. And, yeah, I think it's unique with the corral there is that the boards are a little higher and and the players' benches are across each other, so you don't you don't you don't have them both on the same side like you see the modern rink today, and you know that that definitely gave Calgary Flames a distinct home ice advantage there, and and they say the crowd's definitely on top of you because it's you know it holds uh you know just under seven thousand fans, but it's a more intimate uh, atmosphere there, and I actually imagine the Calgary Flames actually played there one time in some of the big names, and, and I know there's some old pictures that the Flames actually walked through the concourse, uh, you know, to the locker rooms too, which, imagine that today. And imagine, you know, a young Wayne Gretzky doing that, or he Lafer, because at the time those guys were definitely prominent in the NHL at the time. When we played at the Corrales, the Flames, but, uh, you know, that's definitely a lot of interest in hockey history here, so... You know, if you enjoy everything I do on my uh, YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and as I expanded from my original take here, I think I'll uh, I'll do a, a recap video when I take these all game all these games in, and maybe try to share some pictures of what it was like watching those three games at the old Corral, and you know, give the building one final farewell before it meets its fate. Looking at future plans here, don't know when that's going to be, but. It seems like it's inevitable, so as I always say, I'll see you in the next video.